Welcome, it's Josh here. And I wanted to start off this channel by doing an event of the past that took place only a few miles away from where I grew up. And because of the proximity, I always had uh, held this event very near and dear to my heart. And I always thought it would be a really good movie. So although this event is an obscure event, it really was a large part in the start of the Revolutionary War. Now let's talk about the Pine Tree Riot. By the late 17th century, the British Empire required an enormous amount of timber to construct and maintain their vast navy and to protect their many colonies that were spread out throughout the globe. And to do this, they relied heavily on the colonies of North America where timber was abundant. The problem was that the North American colonies were growing quickly as well, and the lumber they were harvesting was important to that growth. One of the North American colonies that uh, was involved for, was from New England, and it was the New Hampshire colony. And in 1722, in New Hampshire, the New Hampshire General Council passed a law making it illegal to cut down any white pine trees of a diameter of 12 inches or more, or they would face a, a heavy fine. Now these trees that were 12 inches in diameter, they were to be reserved for property of the crown. And they were marked that way with three slashes that were in the shape of an arrow. And this mark or symbol was called the King's Broad Arrow. Now, obviously, this would anger the colonists. It was also said to anger them so much that it actually made them angrier than the Stamp Act and the Tea Tax, which are more well known. But the law was mostly ignored for years. And in fact, it wasn't until 1766 when John Wentworth was appointed governor of New Hampshire that this law started to actually be enforced. In 1771, John Sherburn, the deputy surveyor of New Hampshire, was ordered to search the sawmills in the area for white pine that would be considered property of the crown and that contained that king's broad arrow. His men found that six mills contained these logs. Um, they were in Goffstown, New Hampshire and Ware, New Hampshire. And um, the owners of those, law, those um, mills were um, brought, charges were brought against them and fines. So the owners did what they thought was best. They hired a lawyer. And the lawyer they hired was a man named Samuel Blodgett. And he was to represent them in this case. Now, kind of in a stunning move, Blodgett met with Governor Wentworth and he was offered the position of surveyor of the King's Wood. So you kind of have a contract conflict of interest here. Now, this man takes on this case to fight for these uh, sawmill owners. And then all of a sudden he's taking this position as surveyor of the King's Wood that's offered to him by the governor and he accepts it. So then he changes his counsel and he tells the mill owners that they should pay the fine so the charges could be dropped. Well, Gosstown, um, the sawmill owners of Gosstown listened and they did just that. They dropped the, the, the uh, charges. They didn't fight it. They paid their fines and everything was good with them. Now, Ware, the Ware uh, sawmill owner refused and this caused some problems. So on April 13th, 1772, Benjamin Whiting, the sheriff of the county, Hillsborough County, which is where um, Ware was located in, and his deputy, John Quigley, went to Ware to arrest the owner of this, the Ware sawmill, a man named Mr. Ebenezer Mudgett. And Mudgett was held for only a short period of time, and then he was released on the basis that in the morning, he was gonna provide bail. That evening, though, a great a cr crowd gathered at Mudgett's home from the town. And some of the crowd in that, that were there, they offered to pay Mudgett's bail and just kind of drop it and move on. But the majority wanted to make the sheriff pay. And Mudgett was more on that side as well. So the next morning, on April 14, 1772, Mudgett left, led a group of between, accounts differ, but it, between 20 and 40 men to the tavern and inn that Whiting and Quigley had been staying in. And the mob had painted their faces black from soot 
to disguise themselves while they rushed into this establishment. And both Whiting and Quigley were severely beaten with branches made into switches. In fact, Whiting is, is quoted as saying that he thought they were going to kill them. Um, then, to make that worse, now after the beating, the mob took um, Whiting and Quigley's horses. And uh, they actually cut the ears off their horses and then shaved the horses' manes and tails. And then they forced the two to ride out of town while the townspeople lined the main road and jeered at them and slapped at their horses and said all kinds of terrible things to them and kind of gave them a, a pretty nasty exiting party. Now, within a short period of time, um, Whiting and Quigley were able to gather some supporters and they uh, get, got a group that was going to go arrest Mudgett and the one these men that had attacked them. Um, but by the time they were able to get this group and get back to where um, some time had passed and most of the people that were involved were gone. They went into hiding in the woods. They just went back and, and because they had had um, masked their faces they weren't really 100% sure of who was involved um, but they did eventually catch one person and that one person turned and gave up seven others so there were eight people that were kind of tied to this for sure that they were able to pin it on because of uh, of this um, person one person saying it was them and then the others um, being basically ratted out and the men pleaded guilty and they were issued fines of I think it was 20 shillings and that was that so that was the event of the pine tree riot but really the pine tree riot was a small act that eventually would be bigger because it really was one of the first tests of British authority and many believe that that act itself of the Pine Tree Riot was the preceding act that led up to the Boston Tea Party where people heard what happened in where and uh, thought we can push back against uh, the British. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Events of the Past. If you did, it would mean a whole lot to me if you could drop a like on the video. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. And with that, I'm going to leave this episode with a quote from a politician and colonist, William Penn. Passion is the mob of the man that commits a riot upon his reason. Thanks for watching.